Hello, my name is Jeremy Freeman, and I am the tribal archaeologist for the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, and I am also the founder of Archaeology Learning Group, where I teach classes with archaeological topics to youth like yourself. Now today, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a simple science experiment that is meant to simulate the use of an atlatl as a hunting implement. Now, an atlatl was an ancient hunting weapon that in its simplest form consisted of a two foot long stick with a spur on the end that hooked into the back end of a missile consisting of a six foot long dart. And that was then used to hurl the dart at a greater velocity and greater force at prey. It essentially is a simple machine, uh, very similar to a hammer, it's a third class lever, uh, that confers a mechanical advantage uh, as a hunting implement. Now for today's experiment, you will need a few items. First, you'll need a scale uh, and you'll uh, use that to measure the mass of your projectile, which will consist of a tennis ball, such as this one. You will need a sport speed radar, such as this one, uh, which will be used to, to record the speed of each throw and each trial. And you will need uh, implements uh, that will simulate the atlatl, um, and you can either use a dog throwing toy, such as this one, or you can use a scoop from the scoop and ball game, uh, such as this one. You will also need a recording sheet to record each trial uh, as you conduct them. I also recommend the use of some marking cones uh, that you can set up at every 10 meters, uh, as well as a 50 to 100 meter tape uh, so that you can use that to measure the distance of each throw. So the first thing that we'll need to do before we take this experiment outside is to measure the mass of our projectile, which will be this tennis ball. And we're going to use a scale uh, to measure the mass of the tennis ball uh, in grams because this is a science experiment. And then we're going to write the results of that measurement here in that first column where it says mass of ball. So to start, I'm going to turn on our scale and let it zero out. And then once it's uh, at zero, I'm going to place the tennis ball on the scale and give it a second. And it measures at 60.9 grams. So I'm going to write that 60.9 grams here in this first column. And of course, it will be the same for each of our trials. Now that we've measured the mass of the tennis ball, I think it's time to take this experiment outside. So now it's time to conduct our experiment. Um, I have set up the course here uh, by setting up the marking cones uh, at every 10 meters. Um, I went ahead and actually paced them out, but you can actually measure them out using a tape as well. And I do recommend using a tape to measure the distance of each throw as well. Now you can see it is a cold uh, day here, uh, April day here in North Dakota, so I had to dress accordingly and I do apologize for the wind. Uh, but I'll try to uh, make do as much as possible. But let's go ahead and begin our first trial. Now this will be in that first uh, first table where you'll be recording three tosses or three uh, trials by throwing the ball by hand. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to do that first experiment here uh, by seeing how fast and how far I can throw a tennis ball. Now you can see that I have set up the uh, display radar uh, on uh, on the range so that it can measure each, the speed of each throw. Uh, you will want to pay attention to that uh, the what what it records uh, so that you can write that down on your table. So uh, you can see that um, it uh, it landed about 15 to 18 meters out. Um, it was recorded at 41 kilometers per hour. Um, it actually rolled a little bit further than that. But you would write that number, those the the, the distance and the speed. Uh, in that first line in your table and then you'll repeat that experiment three times or two additional times uh, because we'll take the average uh, to uh, of each record um, of each trial and then figure out what the actual advantage of using an implement would be now i'm going to uh, try one of our our implements here and i'm going to first start by using the scoop and ball and let's see how far and how fast i can throw the tennis ball uh, using this
And uh, that one actually didn't record the, uh, the speed, so I'm going to actually try throwing it again. Okay, so uh, that actually went uh, about as far as it rolled as far and it uh, landed at, at about the same place. Uh, we would want to record that using a tape. And it was also at 40 miles per hour. So using the, uh, the scoop here uh, as a tool didn't really seem to confer any sort of advantage. Uh, now I'm going to go and collect the balls uh, and then we will uh, try our last trial uh, using So I'm going to try the experiment one last time uh, using the dog throwing toy and let's see if that helps uh, me throw the ball here at a greater velocity and a greater distance. So uh, you may be able to see uh, that I was definitely able to throw the ball further than I was with the other implement and by hand. And we had a, a reading of 60 kilometers per hour, which is uh, much greater than I was able to throw it by hand, which is about 41 kilometers per hour. So this concludes our, our field experiment. So uh, now it's time to take this back to the lab and do our calculations. So here you can see the data sheet with the values input from the, ver the trials that we conducted in the field. The first thing we need to do is to convert the kilometers per hour to meters per second. And to do this, we're going to divide our value for kilometers per hour that we obtain from our field trials and divide it by 3.6. So here you can see I have uh, typed out the speed that was recorded for each of the trials. 41 for the first trial. 41 kilometers per hour, uh, 40 kilometers per hour for the second trial, and 60 kilometers per hour for the third trial. I then divided each by 3.6. Uh, for the first trial, we got a value of 11.389. For the second trial, we got a uh, value of 11.111. And for the third trial, we got a value of 16.667. Now, if you recall, we're going to be using the formula uh, force equals mass times acceleration. Well, acceleration is actually defined by meters per second per second or meters per second squared. So our next step is to take that converted value of, of kilometers per hour to meters per second, and then uh, we're going to square it. So here you can see that I have calculated uh, this, this square of each of those values. Uh, so for the first trial, um, I have rounded up to 11.4 squared, which comes out to uh, 129.96. For the second trial, 11.1 um, uh, squared uh, uh, comes out to 123.21. And then for the third trial, 16.7 uh, squared, I rounded up, uh, that equals 278.89. So now it's time to return to our formula, force equals mass times acceleration. Now, if you recall, the mass we calculated for this though uh, mass of the ball was 60.9 grams. So I'm going to input that into our formula, uh, mass, uh, our force equals mass times acceleration. I'm going to multiply that by our calculated value for meters per second squared, um, and then we're going to come up with a value. So for our first trial, uh, 60.9 grams times 130 uh, rounded up equals uh, 7,917. And that's that would be joules. So our in our second trial, our uh, we multiplied 60.9 grams times 123.2, and came up with a value of 7,502.88. And then for our final trial, uh, multiplied 60.9 grams times 278.9 uh, meters per second squared, and came up with a value of 16,985.01. So you can see clearly in that final uh, slide there that uh, the value for um, where we use that the dog throwing dog toy dog throwing toy that we came up with a, a significantly greater force value than we did for the other two trials.